I have a confession to make. I'm a perfectionist. I know, I know, you probably would have never guessed it. The borderline obsessive compulsive minimalist that tried on 25 different t-shirts until he found the best fit is a perfectionist? Color me surprised. But here's the thing, I don't see my perfectionism as a weakness. Today when people talk about perfectionism, it's almost exclusively used in the pejorative sense. It's something that you need to overcome in order to create your best work or ideal life. But if you've ever been called a perfectionist, it might actually be a good thing. In fact, that's often where our genius comes from. You just have to be careful because it can also hold you back in the worst way possible. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'll talk more about them later. Being a perfectionist has helped me throughout my life. It's one of the reasons why I was able to build a successful freelance business, why my YouTube channel took off, and how I've created a life where I'm fulfilled, but also constantly challenged. But if I'm being honest, it wasn't always like this. There was definitely a much younger and inexperienced Matt that let perfectionism get the best of him, resulting in projects that failed to launch or never got off the ground. So I wanna talk about how we can harness our perfectionist tendencies for good, but first, it's important to understand why we often get it so wrong. So when it comes to perfectionism, a 2017 study revealed that there are actually two different types. You might either be an adaptive perfectionist or a maladaptive perfectionist. Adaptive perfectionism is the healthy or useful type. People who fall into this category derive satisfaction from achievements made from intense effort and tolerate imperfections. But as we know, there's also a dark side to perfectionism. If you find yourself in a constant state of self-criticism and self-sabotage, you're likely a maladaptive perfectionist, and that's gonna seriously hold you back. For many of us, that harsh inner critic is at the wheel of our perfectionism. It's the voice that tells us that if we're not able to do something perfectly, then we may as well not attempt it at all. Simply put, we use perfectionism often as an excuse. I'll start my business when the timing is just right. I'll only date someone if they're a perfect match. I'll publish my first book when every last detail lines up. We often hesitate to start something new because we're actually afraid. We're afraid of failing, saying something awkward, looking like a complete idiot, or all three at the same time. But this tendency to wait for perfectionism holds us back from growth and it robs us of opportunity. Enter the story of The Thief and the Cobbler. This animated film holds a Guinness World Record for the longest production time of any film, stretching from 1964 to 1993. It took over 29 years to complete. Behind the scenes was a talented yet painfully perfectionist animator by the name of Richard Williams, most famous for his work on Who Framed Roger Rabbit? The Thief and the Cobbler was set to be his magnum opus. Using complex animation techniques, it told the story of a lonely Arabian princess and a poor cobbler who fall in love while trying to retrieve magical orbs. Sound familiar? Are you looking at me? In the late 80s, Williams finally got funding from Warner Bros. to bring his vision to life, but there was a problem. Williams was so fixated on getting every intricate animation detail right that it sent him spiraling into a never-ending loop of perfectionism. And I'm gonna do a masterpiece, I hope, if I can ever finish the thing. His ambitions for flawlessness drove the project well over timeline and budget, and Warner Bros. were forced to dump the film. The film was eventually taken over by another studio in 1993, and a cobbled together version was finally released with lackluster reviews and poor box office performance. It might have been because a very similar film was released one year earlier by Disney, yes, it was Aladdin. Not only did it have a nearly identical storyline, characters, and setting, but it was also animated by some of William's former employees. Ouch. Now, in a way, The Thief and the Cobbler is a cult classic with an iconic legacy of its own, but it's also a precautionary tale of the danger of letting perfectionism hold you back. Now, if you're someone who constantly strives for perfection, it can be difficult to know where to draw the line. If I'm not aiming for perfection, then what the hell am I working towards? Well, there are four principles that have helped me out the most with everything from my creative work to my dating life. But before I share those lessons on how you can turn perfectionism into a strength, a quick word about Squarespace. They're my sponsor for this week's video. Let's say that you finally win your battle with perfectionism and decide to start a blog about you and your cat. So you go to Squarespace and fittingly grab the domain imperfect.com. Wait, what? It's taken? What the f***? You, you work so hard, you come up with a really good idea and... No, it's okay. You were gonna get .com, but somebody already took it and that's okay because we're fine with imperfection.net. Next, you choose a template that fits the vibe of your blog. Something like this. 
After that, you can add photos, drop in your logo, and muster up the courage to make your first post, all with just a few clicks. With Squarespace, you can scale your business with detailed analytics, scheduled posts, and e-commerce stores. It's never been easier to build a website to show the world how imperfectly happy you and your cat are. Visit squarespace.com today for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. When you support Squarespace by using the link in the description below, you're also supporting this channel. So thank you for considering. I truly believe that there is something special inside every perfectionist. They have this relentless drive to be great at what they do. And I think all the best artists, athletes, and entrepreneurs have it. But as we've seen, just because you're a perfectionist doesn't necessarily mean that you're destined for success. So how do you turn perfectionism into a strength? One thing that's helped me is to create realistic goals. If you haven't identified what done looks like, you'll never know when to stop. And you don't have to overcomplicate things either. It could be as simple as figuring out how to make your project or endeavor complete. If you wanna run a marathon, instead of coming up with an ambitious time-based goal of running it in four hours, you could just create a goal to finish the marathon. If you wanna start meditating, instead of committing to doing it every day for 100 days straight, you could set the goal of meditating three days a week for a month. If you wanna write a book, instead of trying to write all 75,000 words in a month, you could set out to write 2,000 words a day until you've written a book. Rather than endlessly pursuing an elusive standard of perfection, what if you actually focused on making the project complete? Try to get to a place where all the elements are there and nothing crucial is missing. Since these goals are far more realistic, you'll be more likely to actually stick to them. As the expression goes, done is better than perfect because perfect is never done. Aim for effort. Shooting for perfection sets us up for failure because it's outside of our control. We can't control how skilled our competition is, what obstacles are going to arise, or how other people perceive our work. But what we can control is how much effort we put in. As my mom used to tell me growing up, just try your best, that's all you can do. Now that's wholesome as f so if you're starting to put yourself out into the dating world, try to focus on the effort you put in, not the outcome, because you will get rejected a lot. You will go on dates that totally flop, and you'll get flaked and ghosted over and over again. I should know, but you should be proud of yourself for taking those uncomfortable steps into uncertainty. And when you aim for effort, you'll start to see improvements. Imagine what would happen, as author James Clear suggests, if we made a continuous improvement of 1% every day. Whether it's getting better at writing or lifting weights in the gym, making minimal improvements each day feels less overwhelming than trying to become a master overnight. But if you commit to improving by just 1% every day for a year, you'd be 37% better by the end of it. And that's a radical change. Stop at 90%. Letting go of perfectionism doesn't mean settling for second rate or sloppy work. It's possible to still have high standards for yourself, but there has to come a time when enough is enough. Consider the law of diminishing returns. This economic principle refers to the point in any production process that once reached will start to decrease output. For example, a worker may produce 100 units per hour for 40 hours, but in the 41st hour, the output drops to 90 units. After this, additional effort is rarely worth the cost, and it's more beneficial to wrap things up. A far more realistic and sustainable approach is to strive for good enough, that sweet spot between perfect and passable. For me, this means stopping once I've gotten the project 90% of the way there. When it comes to the videos that I make on YouTube, I know that most people won't even notice that final 10%. These are the tweaks and changes that might marginally improve a project, but won't make a difference in the outcome or success of it. When I allow myself to let that 10% go, it means I accept the fact that I can't control every single last detail. Every transition won't be perfect. I might forget to color grade a clip, but that's okay if it helps me move the project forward. If you follow this strategy, you can still put things out into the world that you're proud of without paralyzing yourself in the pursuit of perfection. Set ambitious deadlines. It's funny that something as simple as setting an arbitrary deadline can make such a radical difference in what you're able to accomplish. The reason is because without a deadline, a perfectionist will never stop. Whether they're masking their fear of failure by obsessing over every last detail or procrastinating getting started in the first place, a proper deadline creates a clear finish line. You can now start to work backwards to determine the small steps you need to take to finish this project on time. And when you create an ambitious deadline, something really funny happens. You start to quickly realize what is essential for the project and what you've been wasting your time on. You just have to be careful that you don't run into a constant state of burnout because you're too hard on yourself. Humans are really bad at determining how long things will take. So do your best to reach your deadline, but if you have to push it a little bit further, 
that's okay as well. By the way, if you're a freelancer working with clients, then here's the biggest lesson that I've learned about setting deadlines. Tell your client it will take twice as long as you think it'll actually take. By setting two deadlines, one for yourself and one for your client, you'll never be late with a project again, and you'll often deliver a project way earlier, surpassing your client's expectations and earning a client for life. If I could leave you with one thing, it'd be this. No matter what you're working on, whether it's a YouTube video or a relationship, it's okay to push yourself to be great. But at the end of the day, you need to understand that perfection doesn't actually exist. There's no universal authority on what makes something perfect. And each of us has our own different standards that are shaped by our experiences, perspectives, and beliefs. What one person might think is the holy grail, the next person will think is complete trash. So go ahead and obsess about your work while you're working and strive to be exceptional with the limited time that you've got. But once you've made it 90% of the way there, know when it's time to say good enough. <laughs>